Can't go a moment longer without thanking our studio audience for joining us today on Delmarva Life, and we would love to have you with us. Here's how you can get here. Visit DelmarvaLife.com, click on the show tab. Moms and dads bring the kids if they're over 10. Not only would they have a good time with the show, they'd get to see the newsplex as well. And if you don't have access to the web, there's the number to call, 443-880-9116. Summer and baseball, hand in glove. But this summer, you have a chance to take a step back in time and learn about baseball from another era. The Julia A. Purnell Museum in Snow Hill is hosting a Negro League exhibit. And joining us today to tell us more is muse the museum's director, Claire Otterbein. Thanks for joining us Good this afternoon. Here. Now, there's so much to see at this exhibit. You brought some of it in here, but I couldn't did. bring it all, obviously. Right, so right. tell us what, what, what's in there. Uh, we've got baseball cards from a lot of the greats. We've got um, lots of ephemera of pamphlets and that sorts of thing. Um, some books, um, some autographed baseballs, baseball bats, uh, the old batting, glo uh, the old gloves, um, and that kind of thing. Catchers mitts. We've got a great uh, pair of cleats from the 1930s. Oh, wow. mm. um, so a lot of cool stuff to see. Why is it so important to showcase this stuff? Well, you know, some of these players, the Negro League players, they were absolutely, without a doubt, as good or better than their white counterparts. Um, and they have not always gotten the recognition um, of their white counterparts, which is a shame. I think increasingly there's interest in the Negro Leagues and these guys and getting them in the Hall of Fame and that sort of thing, which is great to see. Um, so it's a great part of sports history. You'll see, um, you know, some of your favorites, Satchel Paige, Willie Mays, people, you know, that you recognize probably. Um, but I think it's also really important because even if you're not a sports fan, you know, what was happening with the integration um, of baseball really mirrors what was happening in the greater nation. And so these baseball players, you know, just like African Americans in all parts of life, in all careers, you know, they were struggling um, to be recognized for their ability. And so it tells a greater story bigger than just baseball. And it's a story that we should share with our kids and this is a great opportunity to? Yeah, absolutely. It's very family friendly um, and it's really inspiring stories. You know, these guys are heroes, not just because they were great players, um, but because it took a lot of courage to do the things that they, they did in the face of diversity. Or, uh, um, you know, and so really they struggled um, and really uh, came out on top, and so that's an inspiring story for mm -hmm. children. Now this exhibit is not going to be around forever. That's true. It, it is on display um, until the end of October, so you do have a while to see it, but it won't be there forever because it is on loan to us from a local collector. We're very fortunate to know um, a Salisbury collector named Chris Harrington who has this collection and was willing to loan it to us. All right, I got to ask you about a specific piece. We have right here a helmet. Yes. Tell us the story behind this helmet. Well, that is a mining helmet, as you might recognize. And what does that have to do with baseball? Um, it's a great story. Willie Wells, um, who was a Negro League player, was just this phenomenal hitter. And because of that, um, pitchers were often very aggressive um, with him. And he was just sick and tired of being hit in the head um, with the baseball. And so there was no such thing as a batting helmet to be bought. Um, it wasn't a standard thing that people wore, and so he got a hold of an old mining helmet and just ripped the light off the front. Um, and so he was the first one, the first player to wear um, a batting helmet. And it wasn't until decades later in the 1970s that Major League Baseball mandated that players wear a batting helmet, um, but he was the first guy to do it. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> yeah. now, this, is, this is fascinating, but you've got other exhibits as well. Yeah, the, the Purnell Museum is a regional history museum. Uh, so you'll find exhibits um, about all aspects of Delmarva history. So we've got Native American history, uh, maritime history. Um, our namesake, Julia Purnell, was a needle artist. Um, so she did embroidered pictures. So we have a lot of textile art from the region as well, a great historic costume collection. So really, there's a little something for everybody to see there. How about that? So run wow. down the event details for us one more time so we can make our plans. OK, well, the uh, Negro <coughs> League uh, exhibit um, it is on display, as I said, through October. Um, and the museum is open Tuesday through Saturday from 10 to 4. We're off also open on Sunday afternoons from 1 to 4. Um, people can give us a call at that phone number to find out more about the exhibit. We also have a website, PurnellMuseum.com, that they can check out uh, other events as well. And we'll set you up for a connection with that through DelmarvaLife.com. If you'd like more information on the museum, including how to become a member, you can go to DelmarvaLife.com and click on the show tab. 
Well, up next on Del Marble Life, the Delaware State Park uh, Summer Concert Series. Why you may want to clear the family's calendar for this one. Plus, why before the concerts, you can make a day of it at the park. We're going to tell you how, right here. Del Marble Life, life of the best here on Del Marble.